first scripture reading comes from Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 25. You can find that in the Pew Bibles on page 696 or 653. Listen as I read about the glorious new creation. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament. next scripture reading comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible, so if you're following along, it'll vary slightly in the Pew version. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but he has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee that the human one must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So a lot of things in this world we want to kind of quantify or qualify and attach a certain value or worth to them. For example, how important are certain foods or groceries to us? How do we view or see other people in the world? What are our thoughts on this planet and this life in which we live? Or perhaps more importantly, how do we value our own worth and sense of well-being in ourselves? And from there, what do we make of the, the life that Christ lived? He has given us so much with his life and his teachings and his ministry and the promise of resurrection after a conquering death and the gift of eternal life. And what then? How do we attach worth to something that seems so priceless and something that we could never pay or never cover with our own words or actions or love, no matter how much we might try? Uh, Perhaps we even feel that we're unworthy to be the recipients of such a magnificent and mind-blowing gift. But believe it or not, we have the power to indicate whether or not we feel something is worth it to us. 
Or do we want to buy the name brand Oreos? Or do we go with the store knockoff flakier kind called Morios and buy those instead, right? Our money will dictate which one we find has more worth. So if something's worth it to us, we'll pay the extra money, take the extra time, go the extra mile to reflect that something, in fact, in life is worth it to us. Do we want to go to the beach and forego applying sunscreen? Uh, it's too much work, so we don't want to take the time to do it. Well, the sunburn then might be worth it to some of us, right? If we're dying for some freshly squeezed orange juice, do we want to go to the store and just get one of those cans, or do we want to go pick 500 oranges, peel them all, put them in a juicer, squeeze them, and get two ounces of orange juice, <laughs> right? Which one is worth it to us, the time or the money? Or maybe we want that new job or a shot at that promotion and that had just become available. So for us, if we feel it's worth it, we'll interview, we'll go through the process, we'll research it and hope that we can get it and it will be fulfilling for us one day. So either intentionally or unintentionally, we have the power to dictate whether something is certainly worth it for us in life. So if a product's too expensive or we don't really feel it gives us what we need or want out of it, then it's not worth it, right? But throughout the course of our lives, we might also encounter people that tell us how we should value something and perhaps what we should value in life, right? Or we go to a nice uh, fancy shoe store and the guy comes up to me and says, oh, Chris, you would love these nice $1,800 dress shoes. It feels like you're walking on marshmallows. I say, oh, well, if it's worth it for me to walk on marshmallows, I'll spend $1,800 on shoes. That's just how consumers, I mean, it really works, Right? Maybe even other people might try to tell us this person does not matter because their culture is different. Or they have a different skin tone than we do, or they act different than we do, they have a different taste in music, entertainment, or outlook on life. But whatever the case may be, how we value ourselves and other people and the world and life itself can vary greatly from individual to individual. It can be based on a number of different varying factors how we were raised, and what our personality traits might be, what parents or peers or teachers or mentors and instructors have taught us throughout the years. And then on top of that, we have other influencers such as corporations or news media, social media, television commercials, etc., that influence how we view others and how we value our world and ourselves and people around us. But finally, we have our own selves to consider, right? And what drives us? What motivates us? What passion do we have in life that makes us want to do something or act a certain way or say something in particular to someone else? So the other interesting and likely sad tidbit with a placing value on entities is that in order to place value on something, we say something is worth more than something else, right? So at least when it comes to goods. So you got Oreos or Morios, a first class and coach, you kind of get the idea when it comes to selling and buying products. But you see, if we view something as lesser, or of having less value when it comes to something else, and we lose sight of the importance of it. And maybe someone who appreciates the Morios might be financially constrained and just really needs that pick-me-up in life. Whereas we feel, I would never purchase that, why do we need it? We lose sight of that if we dictate value to everything and every other person in life. So our confidence in ourselves begins to wane. Our confidence in others kind of begins to fade as well. If we view something as having more or less value than even ourselves. So maybe we even say to ourselves, I'm not famous. I've never made a product that people have purchased or bought. I've not seemingly made anything of significance in this world. I've not uh, made as much money as my friend Joe has. Or I have not as com accomplished as much as my colleagues in life. Therefore, I am of little worth or little value. But that can be very damaging to our psyche and our self-esteem and our confidence in life. So what we need to know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, is that every single person in the world is of great worth. The people are not like goods or products that carry with them different values or different worths. All of us have some sort of value. We all have some sort of gift or talent in life that we can do or share. 
Now, some people are gifted with a talent of music. Other people like me would you would cry if you heard me sing in a solo, right? So maybe we should ask ourselves, what do we want to be known for? What do we want our legacy to be in life? Which brings me to the next stop on our valuing life train. I found this video uh, recently. It's actually a, uh, a pre-screening of tonight's Game of Thrones episode. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. It's, it's not really. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. It's a, it's a video I found just kind of perusing online, so take a look. And there's no sound because it was filmed before sound. So now what's fascinating about this video is the heading that the person that posted this online and what they said. They titled this, Not One Person in This Footage is on This Earth Anymore. But here they are, alive, living out their plans and goals, before the world war, before air travel, no radios, no television, no cell phones, and not even fathoming being seen by someone on the internet 119 years later. So we can cut that. There we go. So that was filmed in 1900, now, quite a while ago, right? But it kind of got me thinking, what were the values to these people in their time and in their life? What was important to them? What really mattered? Additionally, do we believe ourselves to be of more worth than the people seen in this video because we're alive? We have cell phones, we have televisions. Or we have different things that exist, or we've been through terrorist acts, we've been through different violent acts and different hatred things that have existed in this world. Or would we see each other as equals if we were to ever meet someone from that video one day? Do we value the history and possibly the foundation that these people created in their own life and through their own kind of legacy? Or who knows, maybe someone in this room is even related to one of these people in the video. I have no way of testing that, but I just think it would be kind of neat to think of, right? So who knows how far back their legacy goes, or what they valued as important. But the questions seem endless when we see a video like that filmed 119 years ago from today. But this also got me to thinking, here were some innocent people going about their lives and their business, minding the time of day and wondering when the next horse and buggy was going to pull up to catch their next appointment or what have you. So heaven knows they weren't thinking about people like us 119 years later watching them and seeing them go about their lives long after they have left this earth. Yet I'm sure that did not detract from them knowing and seeing themselves as important or knowing that their life really mattered. But it also got me into thinking maybe I was kind of wrong in that assessment. And maybe we have all, all along, since humankind has been created, just struggled with our own sense of self-worth and importance in life. So ultimately, though, maybe we need to think of it in kind of this way. If one were to see a video of us, or to read our social media posts, or our letters, or our journals, or even look at our Netflix viewing history, 119 years from today, what would they think of us? What would be their kind of preconceived notion of who we were and how we lived our life? But what do we want our legacy in life to be? And who gets to decide that? Right? There's so many outside influencers who ultimately says that my life was important or this is the legacy that I left behind. You see, there are times in my own life where people have told me straight to my face that I would not amount to much of anything in life at all. Oh, you joke too much, Chris. I said, I'll show you who gets the last laugh, right? But no, people will tell you, you can't do this. You won't do that. And there have been also people that have encouraged me and challenged me and supported me no matter what. There have been people that believed in me, and there have been people that doubted me. And there have been people that have loved me and people that have loathed me. But I, I just want to make a quick note. Uh, the people that have loved me far outweigh the people that loathe me, right? Just, just so you know. And there have been people that think I am great and people that think I might be not so great. The point is, people will tell us all manner of things in life. So our task is to choose which ones we want to believe and which ones we put more stock into. 
Do we put more credence in the person that claims we will fail at everything and never amount to anything in life? Or do we believe more in ourselves and trust the person that tells us, you can do many great things in this life, and I believe in you, and I love you, and I'll support you every single step of the way? And that is what we should do for ourselves, and for our children, and for our children's children, a support and love unconditionally, a bring out the best in people and support and help and guide along the way. So ultimately in life, we have to ask ourselves three, what I find, very important questions. Uh, question number one, can we get that up on the screen? What do we place value on in life? So if we know the answer to that question, then we'll get why and where we prioritize things. Is it worth it to take the time to put on the sunscreen? Is this person worth the time to help them or do something for them in life? So what do we place value on in life? Is it time? Is it money? Is it God? Is it me? And just finding that out can really help us immensely. Number two, who do we value? Do we value ourselves? If not, maybe we need to find a way to begin to value ourselves and even those around us. Even those that might seem different from us, right? So we need to value and love the ones that we know and the people that might seem strange or different to us. We need to love them just as much. So who do we value? It is only one person? Is it only a handful of people? Or is it everyone that we meet and run into in life? Number three, do we value the world in which we live? Are we intentional about recycling or caring for God's creatures and taking care of this planet that hopefully thousands of generations later can enjoy it like we did? So all of these are critical questions that we need to diligently find the answers to. Because at the end of the day, what really matters are the thoughts of how we view others, how we view ourselves, how we view God, and how we view the world. Everything kind of boils down to that. Because how we view something, how we see something, strongly influences how we act, right? If we value something, we'll act accordingly and be kind and do things in good nature. So everything in life carries great worth and value. Even if we struggle to see it or not. Our thoughts and our actions matter. The people matter. And this precious life that we have matters immensely. So if we truly value life, we should value it in all facets. Ours, others, animals, and the planet in which we live. See, all of it has a place a great deal of sense of worth in the world. For if we did not matter, would God have sent his one and only son to teach us and live out his ministry on this planet? If we had little to no worth, would Christ have died for our sins on the cross that fateful Good Friday? If we had no value, would we have the celebration and the promise of the resurrection and eternal life? If we had no value, would we even have this life in itself? To believe to live, and to fulfill each and every waking moment that we are here. And so I come back to the question, what do we want our legacy to be? And when someone reads our book, or looks at our photographs or our videos, what do we want to be remembered for? Do we want to be the person that's placed more value on consumption than we have on conservation? Do we want to be known as a person that values material goods more than we valued other people? Do we want to be known as a person that solely cared for ourselves and forego uh, the caring and the selfless sacrifice for other people? Do we want to be known as a person that celebrated and cherished Easter for Christ and believed in that resurrection or the one that merely views it as a day for Easter eggs and chocolate? So how would someone 119 years from today <laughs> see us, and know us, and know our legacy. Perhaps those thoughts and those questions should influence how we act and how we live out this life, and that we should appreciate the lives that we have and what we even think of ourselves. So truth be told, that God loves us, and God loves us immensely, and more than we probably even know. So that alone should be enough to get us 
through the times that are tough or challenging and make the moments of joy that much sweeter in life, to know that we are loved, and sometimes it might not be, and we might need to find that support or value in someone else that can help us as well. But in closing, do not ever feel that you are unworthy. Do not let other people attach their own value or sense of worth to you and your life. You are capable of setting your own worth and value and of believing in yourself. Yet even if you feel like your self-esteem is somewhat low, your confidence is kind of slipping by the wayside, or your self-worth is floundering and you're just going through the motions in life, know that you are loved. Know that you are worthy of this life and the immense riches that will follow it. You see, we all are God's precious children. We all are precious in God's sight, and we all have some sort of value or worth that we can bring to ourselves or someone else in life. So do not ever forget that. I can assure you God never will, and God will love you till this day and this day forward till the end of your life. Amen.